Hey, this is V from the A-Team, and today on 4-Minute Film School, we are shooting a pool scene for a coming-of-age comedy. Let's look at it. Today with me, I have John Salmon returning. You know him from Video Game High School. He DP'd that, which is appropriate because today we're talking about coming of age stories in Edge of Seventeen, in Booksmart, in eighth grade. There's always a pool scene. So we decided to have an outdoor daylight pool scene here. What is the sort of vibe we're going for, John? I think we wanted a little bit of a sense of romance, some beauty lighting, but also sort of vulnerable naturalism. We decided to go, for you guys' sake, with a more indie approach, which was to go on a slightly longer lens and put the camera on the side of the pool. It was very low, but definitely outside of the splash zone. In our case, we were doing it on a sandbag, just so we could kind of adjust, because the thing you'll notice first when you're filming in water, especially with actors in water, is that they're not going to be able to hold a mark. There's a lot of adjusting the elements around each other until everything kind of lines up for just a moment and then hopefully you get your dialogue out in those moments. So John, tell me about your lens choice. So we chose to use a set of Zeiss Super Speeds that were rehoused. They're actually from the 70s. We thought that using some older glass like this that has a really soft fall off and just an overall kind of warmer, softer look uh, would help us achieve that genre more. So besides the sun, what other lighting did you use in this scene? So we cross-keyed from behind the, uh, the subjects, uh, one from the side of the pool, uh, it was a 300D with a light dome 2 on it, and then another 300D with a light dome 2 on it, menace armed out over the pool. And that was sort of a fill source to kind of wrap the sunlight around on their faces. And yet when we went into our over-the-shoulder shots, the sun, which was directly behind them in the two shot, went away went behind the trees and so now it became our primary key source. So we opened up a full two stops once the sun kind of went behind the trees and we'd had no more direct light and at that point we allowed the aperture light to create some shape. When the sun was gone and we didn't have the aperture light on it just looks very much like kind of shade light. I removed the diffusion so I could get a little more stop to be able to compete with the sun. And also it creates a more punchy kind of light, a more hard light, which is what sunlight is generally. Mm -hmm. And it's also more retro to use harder lights because that's all they had. You actually telescope them over the water. Do you have any specific tips on how to do that safely? The menace arm was done before the actors were ever in the pool. We did it in a safe way where we were able to sandbag it down really well, made it very safe. Anytime you're working around liquids, a large amount of liquids, you want to use a device called a GFCI. And if there's any severe change, meaning like, for example, a short out, if a light were to fall into the water, it's a way to prevent anyone from being electrocuted. It'll just stop the power flow right away. All right, so this is our coming of age pool scene. Let's take a look. All right, John, so when we're shooting in pools, what are some things that we should keep in mind? So you want to take appropriate electrical safety measures like using a GSCI. You want to keep in mind that your actors will often be in motion, so you have to be vigilant. And I would say that you want to light before you actually place your actors in the pool because it's not safe to be placing lights around a pool when the actors are in the water. There have been a lot of coming of age movies recently that included pool scenes. So for your comment question, we want to know which of these pool scenes was most effective for driving the plot of that particular movie forward and why. The best answer is going to win an empty SKB case so you can put all your lights in it and take it wherever you want. Euphoria. It was Euphoria. If you like 4-Minute Film School, if you find use in these episodes, please do subscribe to the channel and like this video. It really does help us out a lot. And if you have any questions for John or myself, you can follow us on our social media. Our handles are below. That's it for now. Have a good day.